Hey everyone, welcome back to Flight Level View. Oh, and happy 2022. This is gonna be another aviation education series. This one's gonna be kind of long, so I had to divide them up into parts. So this is part one, aviation education, climb. There are two general ways that we can classify climb. Number one, angle of climb. For a certain horizontal distance of travel, you get a certain vertical distance of climb. The second kind of climb is the rate of climb. This one involves only the vertical speed of the climb itself. It doesn't take into account your horizontal distance covered. That's not to say that there is not any horizontal distance covered. It's just that the primary emphasis is on the vertical rate of the climb itself. I have an airplane drawn in unaccelerated flight. The weight and the lift are equal to zero, meaning that the airplane does not climb, it does not descend. The aircraft's thrust and the drag are equal to zero, meaning that it's not accelerating and it is not decelerating. You notice by rotating the airplane 45 degrees counterclockwise, we get a climb angle that I just circled, and with that climb angle, we get a weight apparent drag. The weight apparent drag can be found by using some basic trigonometry. It is the weight multiplied by the sine of the climb angle. The weight apparent drag is not some sort of a friction. The increased climb angle causes the weight to have a rearward component, and that component adds up with the aerodynamic drag. The weight apparent drag and the original aerodynamic drag are now greater than the original thrust vector. If this deficiency in thrust is allowed to continue, then the aircraft will begin to slow down. To prevent the slowdown from happening, you would require excess thrust. Your climb angle is predicated on three variables. So you could have a very steep climb angle if you had a lot of thrust. Also, you could have a very steep climb angle if you reduce your weight. And thirdly, you can also increase your climb angle if you minimize your drag. All three examples that I just gave can be summed up into this. Excess thrust. Excess thrust will allow you to climb. A lot of excess thrust will allow you to climb at a very steep climb angle. In order to get a deeper understanding of how excess thrust affects an aircraft's climb angle, Let's take a look at a drag curve. This is a very typical drag curve for a jet airplane. In red, you have the thrust required, and in green, you have the jet engine's thrust available. Excess thrust is the area found between the thrust available and the thrust required line. The speed that gives you the best angle of climb is called Vx. So, where would you get the maximum angle of climb on this current graph? wouldn't it be where you have the least amount of drag? So in a jet, your VX speed is also your minimum drag speed. Now let's talk about the same thing, but for propeller airplanes. Just like before, the excess thrust is the area in between the thrust available and thrust required lines. I suppose the main thing you have to remember is that for propeller airplanes, the VX climb is located at min power speed versus jet, which is located at the min drag speed. I'm gonna go into much more detail regarding these drag curves and power curves in the following lessons. There are a couple of factors that affect the climb gradient. Obviously, it is weight. As the weight increases, your weight apparent drag also increases. You guys can visually see that the second red line that I drew is longer than the first one, right? In order to maintain a constant speed climb, the pilot is gonna require excess thrust to offset the increase in weight apparent drag. Another option that a pilot has when he does not have a lot of excess thrust is to reduce the climb angle. You can see that the weight increase does not further increase the weight apparent drag, therefore not requiring as much excess thrust in order to maintain a constant speed climb. By reducing the climb angle, we can reduce the thrust required. 
The problem with weight is you can't look at it independently. An increase in weight will increase the lift, and an increase in lift will increase the induced drag. That's what I have drawn here. I grayed out the bottom portion just to emphasize that we're not talking about that. We're going to be talking about the lift portion. I've already made a crash course video on induced drag. If you're not too familiar with induced drag, please go and check it out and then come back to this video. This is just a basic drag curve, induced drag, parasitic drag, and total drag. I'm going to show you how the increase in induced drag affects the drag curves as well as the speeds. Do you guys notice anything? The induced drag curve and the total drag curve have curved upwards towards the right. Also, notice what happens to the VX speed. Originally, it's here, but as the induced drag increases, the speed also increases. So, increasing the weight or increasing the induced drag, they mean the same thing for this example, increases your VX speed. Your VX speeds are not constant. Let's take a look at the jets and props again. An increase in weight moves the drag curve upwards towards the right. An increase in weight also increases your VX speed. Don't think that you're gonna climb with the same oomph as you were when you were lighter. The increase in weight and drag eat away at your excess thrust available, making your climb less compared to the previous example. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all I got for part one. You know the drill. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. And if you really want to, please leave a lengthy comment in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.